speaking to Maria Konnikova, she's the author of The Confidence Game, why we fall for it every time her first job out of college working uh, for uh, the great Charlie Rose show, and you were back on Charlie Rose a couple of weeks ago. That must have felt pretty good. Um, it, it certainly did. I mean, I had to. I had to work hard for that. I did. I did not get to go on his show after my first book. He made me write a second one. Oh man! <laughs> but he must have been so, pretty proud of you when you came back, right? He I absolutely hope. was. Yeah. He yeah. absolutely was. He and I. You know, I, I'm very grateful to him. He's been a wonderful mentor throughout the years. Nice. So this is in the book you talk about the 419 scam, sometimes called 419 scam, sometimes the Nigerian prince scam. And there is not one person watching who hasn't received an email probably today from somebody saying, I, you know, I'm dying, I'm my will, I want you in my will, but you need to help me. But what is, one of the reasons this sucks you in is it's not immediately apparent that they want anything from you. They just, That's absolutely right. And in fact, this yep. started as a pen pal. Tell us about the original, uh, not, uh, whatever, a Nigerian prince scam for one of a better name. So, yeah, no, the original Nigerian prince was uh, someone named Bill Morrison. Um, all of a sudden, um, ads appeared in newspapers around the country, and this was in the 1800s. 1800s, folks! A uh, hundred twenty yes. years ago! <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was from a Nigerian prince, and he said, you know, I, I'm a prince, um, I live in Nigeria, and I just need friends. I'm oh. lonely. It was really heartbreaking, so heartbreaking that newspapers ran this ad for free, um, and it included his address. And people started writing to him, and they developed a correspondence because all he wanted were some American pen pals. You know, how, how sweet is that? Oh. And, and so eventually, after a few exchanges, he, he would say something along the lines of, you know, I have so many jewels. I don't have thing to do with them. You know, what, what am I going to do? To me, they're worthless baubles. Why don't I send you some? In exchange, all I need is $4 and a pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, that pair of pants gets me gets me every time. So What a strange I'll, thing to ask I for. Know. Exactly, but you know what? It also makes it seem more re more realistic. He needs pants, you know. Okay. Yeah. He's Nigerian. Maybe they don't have pants there. I don't know. Exactly. Who knows? Who knows how they do it over in Nigeria? Right. And <laughs> this is remember pre-internet. You right. can't uh, 1880s can't folks. Figure it out. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so what ended up happening was people sent him pants. He got so many pants and lots of money. But then they never got their jewels in exchange. Oh. And so all of a sudden the post office started getting complaints. You know, where are my jewels? And so they started looking into this because this is mail fraud potentially. Um, and so they dug into it. And finally, they found the perpetrator, Bill Morrison, um, and they ended up not pressing any charges because he was a 16-year-old boy. 16 years old. He was even younger when he started, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, um, he was even younger. This, this went on for quite a while. <laughs> it's like a little kid. It's like a 14-year-old kid. He's doing this. Exactly. And was exactly. he, do you think he was a con artist? I mean, he, did he want money or was it, I mean... I guess we'll never know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think I think we pro he probably wanted money. Right. I mean, the four dollars. Think about it. What's the pants the time, though? What's the with the pants? I have no, I have no <laughs> idea. I mean, I want to write a book just about the pants called I, Bill Morrison's I, Pants. <laughs> <laughs> but that I guess that makes it more plausible. Somebody in the chat room is saying, yeah. "Oh, because because the pants makes it credible." If you said, exactly. "Just send me money." That would sound like he was greedy, but it just I mean, yeah, it would sound like alarm bells and pants and four dollars. That's like a request from a friend. You right. know, send me some pants. Maybe right. the four dollars right. will help cover my costs when I send you the jewels. Who knows? But if you think about it, if he has like a hundred pen pals, four hundred dollars back then in the eighteen eighties, oh, yeah. can you imagine? That's a lot of money. It's tons of money. It's a huge amount, especially for a sixteen-year-old boy. What are you? But this gonna, shows you, you gonna... con artists are kind of nativist psychologists. They are. Without studying a, a lick of psychology, they know the pants thing is is actually brilliant, right? And and they know somehow that that's going to work. They're brilliant. They are they often do. are they often smarter than the average bear? 
Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They are. And this is this is why, you know, when you asked me earlier, what is it about? And I said, I think it's about power um, because a lot of them, they're really smart. And being a con artist is a lot of work. I mean, as Mark Twain said, you know, don't ever tell lies because that way you don't have to try right. to remember what you told to whom. Um, and this is something very similar. It's a lot of effort to actually live a lie all the time. And so they could have been incredibly successful at so many legitimate careers. And yet this is what they chose right. or it chose them. And so, yeah, they're incredibly smart. And um, I think that when you see how many of them had the opportunity to be in legitimate careers, you wonder, you say, hey, you made much less money in the long term than you would have had you just been a legitimate um, you know, businessman. And I say businessman broadly, you know, legitimate career person. Um, and yet, you know, to them, they want to con. They love that deception. I wonder what happened to Bill Morrison. I would have loved to, you know, catch up with him 20 years later right. to see if there was a second act to that story. One thinks there was. Do con men ever get cured? Um, hardly ever. So Frank Abagnale, the star of Catch Me If You Can. He or I guess pretty Vampire normal. He didn't try he, to take my wallet when yeah, I met him. <laughs> so he he's an exception. But I have to say, Catch Me If You Can makes him seem like he was just this incredible con artist. He was caught after two years, yeah. which makes him not very good. Right. Someone like Damara did this for decades and decades and decades. And so I think Abagnale just was kind of, he's an exception. He was doing a lot of it on a lark, and now he helps the government um, figure out right. how do you catch others like him. But he's really an exception. Most con artists, I would say the vast majority, um, stick with it their whole life until until they're in jail. But most of them never get caught. Most of them are never in jail. So in some ways, we only know about the worst con artists. Right, the ones that aren't very good, right? The rest <laughs> yeah, of them the get elected get to, to high office.